This DVD is made by the U.S. Space Walk of Fame Museum, a 501c3 foundation based in Titusville, Florida. Most of the footage you see on this DVD came from members of the launch teams that were on these failures. This DVD documents some of the space program's earlier failures from 1950 to 1998. There were over 3,400 launches from the 42 launch pads at Cape Canaveral Air Force Station and the Kennedy Space Center. Of this total, there was approximately 450 failures. SNARK was the first intercontinental vehicle. It was an air breather. It was so unreliable that most of the flights ended up in the ocean and coined the phrase, SNARK infested waters. One SNARK ended up going towards Brazil in 1956 and was recovered in 1983 by a farmer. The Jupiter was launched on March 1, 1957 from Complex 5. It was an intermediate range ballistic missile and was in competition with the Thor. This flight terminated at 7.4 seconds at 48,000 feet. There were 34 Jupiters launched, 11 of them were failures. The Atlas 4A was one of the first atlases to be launched. The series of atlases were A, B, C, D, E, and F. There were 160 different types of atlases launched from the Cape and there were 38 failures. The tanks of this atlas were made out of stainless steel and pressurized like balloons. It was thought that the G-loads presented to the vehicle would cause the tank to collapse on liftoff, but this first failure proved that the tanks were capable of withstanding the G-loads. The Vanguard was launched on December 6, 1957 from Pad 18A and was one of our first attempts to put a satellite in orbit after Sputnik. There was tremendous political pressure to launch the first Vanguard. There were 24 launches of the Vanguard and only three of them were able to get a satellite in proper orbit. The rest of them were suborbital or failed. The Thor was the other intermediate range ballistic missile being developed and there were 31 launches and 5 failures. This Thor was one of the first and it was January 25, 1957. The next view is of a Thor being launched at night and it was in late April of 1957, and when it failed, it came down next to the pad. It used to be that people would run outside the blockhouse to view the launch because we did not have the technology to follow it, and when they saw it coming back down, they ran back inside. After that, there were no personnel ever allowed outside the blockhouse after a launch. The Mercury Redstone was only a 4-inch rise. This was caused by a ground wire being pulled loose from the vehicle upon liftoff. It turned out that the battery on the vehicle was not tied to ground, so the vehicle shut down. The spacecraft thought the flight had finished, so it went through what it would do if it had separated. The great fear of this was that the parachute would inflate and pull the vehicle over. The Polaris was developed for the Navy. There were 68 launches and 10 failures. All of the early ones launched from land, and later they were launched from submarines.
This is the Titan I. There were 47 launches and 15 failures. Titan was an intercontinental ballistic missile and was in competition with the Atlas for the intercontinental ballistic missile contract. Atlas 9B was launched on November 17, 1958. This was the same vehicle that placed John Glenn in orbit. As stated earlier, there were 160 launches of various Atlases and 60 failures. Atlas Able 9C was to be launched off of Complex 12 on September 24, 1959, and was a moon probe. This failure was the largest explosion that ever occurred at the Cape. If you look at the umbilical tower that is next to the vehicle, when the vehicle fell over, the vehicle tower was blown halfway between the pad and the ocean. The crew in the blockhouse was only 600 yards away, and one of the first phone calls was, Is there anybody still alive? This is a different view of 9C, and you can see where the umbilical tower sits to the left. This was a static firing. In other words, we were holding it down to test the engines. The fire that burst out in the thrust section caused the vehicle's main body to fall out of the thrust section, and the gel between the liquid oxygen and the refined petroleum ran about 15%. The shock wave was felt as far away as Patrick Air Force Base. Atlas 8E was launched from Complex 13 on January 24, 1961. E and F were going to be the military versions that would be put in silos or horizontal launchers where they had to be raised in case of retaliation against a Soviet attack. The Atlas Centaur F-1 was launched on May 8, 1962 from Complex 36A and was the first vehicle to use a liquid hydrogen liquid oxygen second stage. There were 146 Atlas Centaur launches over a period of time, the last one being in 2005. There were 15 failures. This one destructed at approximately 40,000 feet where the insulation panels around the hydrogen tank broke loose from the top and the heat got to the tank, causing it to explode. The Atlas went through it and then it blew up.
The Atlas Centaur V was launched on March 2, 1965 from Complex 36A. The engines shut down prematurely at about 10 feet, causing the vehicle to set down on the pad. The force of this explosion was used by NASA to calculate a safe area needed for the Saturn during the Apollo launches. This Delta II was launched on January 17, 1997. This was one of the last flights of the Delta II program. The solid fuel particles that fell back to Earth created a lot of fires and damage to vehicles that were left in the parking lot. This view of the failure was taken from Jetty Park in Cocoa Beach and really shows a magnificent view of the failure. The Titan Centaur was a heavy launch vehicle, and there were 23 launches and 3 failures. TC-9 failed at approximately 40,000 feet due to a guidance error. It was destroyed by the range control as it went off course. There were 5 more Titan Centaurs launched before the end of the program. International failures. We have very little information on international failures. It is estimated that there were at least 250 failures, mostly Russian. The first failure launch is of the Chinese Long March on January 25, 1995. This vehicle landed in a village. There was no estimate of casualties. The video of the Russian failure is referred to as the Netherlands catastrophe. There was tremendous pressure from Khrushchev to launch this vehicle. Chief Marshal Netherlands took a chair down to the site to speed the launch along. 
Due to confusion in the blockhouse, a signal was sent to ignite the second stage, which was sitting on top of a fuel first stage. There was an estimate of 269 people killed on the launch pad, the chief marshal being one of them. The video and information about this failure was not released for 30 years. On June 26, 1973, a Cosmos booster rocket killed nine technicians and soldiers. On March 18, 1980, a Vostok rocket exploded on the pad, killing 50 people, mostly soldiers.